it's a, a privilege and a tremendous pleasure to welcome you here today. Uh, my name is Alexei Karanovska and I am the technical director of the Institute for Digital Archaeology. Now this project um, is all about intersections, um, the intersection between the arts and the sciences, um, the intersection between cultural heritage and public sol policy, the intersection perhaps between our belief in what is right and our power to enact it. And here, out in the glorious and somewhat unexpected sunshine, we are at an intersection, a space which couldn't possibly speak more strongly to these interfaces, between the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, the National Gallery of Art, the United States Capitol, and the Washington Monument. So I'd like to take a very brief moment to thank everyone who's worked so hard to put this installation together over the last several weeks, um, months um, and days. Our colleagues at the Dubai Future Foundation, our friends in Syria and throughout the Middle East, Congressman Royce and Engels and their staff, the Park Service, the Parks Police, our logistics team and our collaborators at Tour Art Studios in Carrara, Italy. And I'd also like to both thank and introduce our first speaker our organization's founder and executive director and the head of the Triumphal Arch Project, Roger Michael. Dr. Karnowska, thank you. I'll be very brief. I know it's quite hot. Um, today's installation here in Washington of this uh, amazing reconstruction of Palmyra, Syria's Triumphal Arch, concludes, I guess, a three-continent yeah, three tour that began in April 2016. I was just uh, speaking with Congressman Royce about that memorable day on Trafalgar Square when then London Mayor Boris Johnson uh, issued what I guess I will call a stern rebuke uh, of ISIS. Uh, the Daily News described it in a different way with four or five asterisks, but that's the Daily News, uh, for its policy of cultural cleansing conduct that was declared uh, just last December to be a, a crime against humanity. Um, the Arch then visited Dubai, uh, where it was unveiled by a really a, an absolutely unprecedented uh, group of uh, regional leaders, some of whom had never appeared before on the same dais in public, and the heads of uh, UNESCO, ICOMOS, uh, Christine Lagarde was there from the IMF. It really was an extraordinary show of solidarity uh, around the idea of heritage preservation. Then last year, the Arch became the centerpiece of the G7 summit uh, in Florence. That was extraordinary. Uh, and, and global uh, heritage protection was the declared theme of the G7 uh, in, in 2017. Uh, and it was it was, uh, it was a great event, and uh, uh, UNESCO and, and the IDA spoke jointly um, about mo the kind of technology that, that is available today, uh, like the 3D modeling and carving technology that, that created the arch that stands behind me here, um, that provides means for uh, bringing cultural heritage assets back to life in ways that never existed before, including vir virtual reality, um, which we demonstrated at the United Nations last month. Um, the arch also stood in City Hall Plaza in New York City. Uh, Mayor de Blasio was kind enough to have it there in his house. Uh, a symbol of that that city's own uh, extraordinary rebirth from from violence and destruction. Um, I, unforgettably for me, the arch was also unveiled in Arona, Italy, by the sons of Khaled Al Assad. Uh, Khaled Al Assad was uh, Palmyra's chief archaeologist, murdered by ISIS when he refused to reveal the location of that city's hidden art treasures. And uh, one of uh, Mr. Assad's uh, children was also gravely wounded. In, uh, by ISIS, but nonetheless, they they appeared uh, at the at the unveiling. And it really was a it was a special a special time. Um, the arch now, quite fittingly, has made its way uh, to the the place that symbolizes democracy uh, worldwide. It's and it's Roman style de representative democracy. Um, that is celebrated here, and it's not. And you see it in the classical buildings. Thomas Jefferson was very mindful of that connection when he helped design the Capitol that stands behind the arch. You'll see it in a few minutes, beautifully framed by the arts, arch. Um, but that those same that same DNA is present in this arch. This is also the product of 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 the of the of, of the classical era, uh, and it reminds us uh, that what happens here and and what our honored guests do every day. In fact, they're just they're just here from a vote in the Capitol. They were they're performing that function just minutes ago. It, that that what happens here is connected to this this ancient tradition that has survived throughout the millennia because because there's something about it that's worth preserving, just like it's worth preserving the objects uh, that embody uh, the history of that. 
that of that legacy, including this reconstructed arch. And we're, we, I, I am incredibly proud to have uh, with us today two true heroes uh, of cultural heritage preservation. It's uh, House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Ed Royce and Ranking Member Elliot Engel. Uh, both of these men are tireless advocates for the protection of global cultural heritage assets. And between them, they passed four or five, any number of key bipartisan. That, and that's really, it speaks, I think, well, uh, not that speaks to the importance of heritage protection generally, but it also speaks to the uh, the diplomacy and the and the skill. We we're talking about Daniel Webster. It takes Daniel Webster like skill to get a bipartisan agreement on on things in the Congress. And these gentlemen have done it over and over again with respect to these these cultural heritage protection statutes. Um, and these statutes, uh, number one, safeguard these things like the Palmyra Arch, places like Palmyra, but it also ensures that terrorists uh, will never be able to benefit financially from the sites that they plunder, which is a huge source of their resource. And so Congressman Royce and Engel are, in that way, not just protecting history, um, but they're also protecting our present. Um, I'm deeply grateful they have taken time to honor us with their presence today. Um, uh, whom to introduce first? Uh, uh, Congressman Engel, you're closer, so uh, I'll, I'll introduce from, from uh, the, the great Empire State of New York, uh, Congressman Engel. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's really uh, an honor to, to be here. I know it's hot, so I will also be brief. Uh, I'm pleased to, to be here with this, this beautiful, beautiful uh, thing uh, that we all cried about when they tore it down. Uh, we were sick about it. Um, I'm really glad we're able to recreate it here. Um, I'm he happy to be here with everyone, but especially uh, my friend, uh, Chairman uh, Ed Royce of the uh, Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, Ed and I have worked together in the most bipartisan way in Congress. He's the chairman, so I give most of the credit to him. Um, he's retiring at the end of this Congress, um, and I'll be sadder than anyone else to see him go, uh, but I'm proud of the many legislative achievements we've made together as a team, uh, and, and of course, uh, that's what we're talking about today as well. Uh, one of those uh, accomplishments is the Protect and Preserve International Cultural Property Act. We authored the bill. So, uh, President Obama signed it into law, and it's the sort of thing that flies under the radar, but can make a big difference. And leading up to the passage of the bill, we had seen videos of ISIS uh, and other extremist groups taking sledgehammers to ancient monuments and weapons of war to ancient civilizations. And tragic as these scenes were, we saw them alongside pictures of innocent people being slaughtered. So people would say, why should we care about these ancient artifacts when people are losing their lives? And the answer is, really, there's another element to this. We learned that whatever ISIS could get their hands on before they smashed the rest of smithereens, they were peddling on the black market. And they were selling these priceless, irreplaceable parts of history to help finance their campaign of violence and their killing of innocent civilians. So it really goes, goes hand in glove. So I reached out to Ed and we put our heads together and came up with this bill. If ISIS was profiting from this looting and exploitation, that was a place we could clamp down. And this law slapped on tough new requirements to track and stop trafficking in looted artifacts. We sought to cut off a funding stream for these extremists, and I understand, and know Ed does as well, that it's not enough just to deny ISIS the profits they reaped from this destruction. When ISIS soldiers swung these sledgehammers, it wasn't a random act of vandalism, it was a deliberate campaign to rewrite world history. From the tomb of Jonah in Mosul to Yazidi shrines in Sinjar, uh, ISIS decimated the very sites that preserved a record of the region's rich and diverse past. ISIS, in essence, tried to rewrite history. The triumphal arch of Palmyra behind us occupies a special place in that prolific history. For nearly 2,000 years throughout the ages of human civilization, this distinctive piece of architecture stood strong as cultures, religions, regimes came and went in the progression of human history. When we look at this beautiful arch, we're seeing through the eyes of ancient civilizations, and to have it right here at the Capitol, it's really extraordinary. And that's why I'm so pleased to be here celebrating the tremendous work of the Oxford Institute of Digital Archaeology in recreating this masterpiece. The thugs of ISIS 
destroyed the physical arch, but we will not and never allow them to take that profoundly important piece of human history away from us, away from the people of Syria, away from anyone. This, recre this recreation honors this part of our world's heritage. So by being here today, we stand shoulder to shoulder. Our voices is one. We will not let the terrorists erase history. We are in solidarity with the people of Syria who have been subjected to such unimaginable horror by ISIS and the Assad regime. This disgusting tactic didn't start with ISIS. Throughout history, groups have used the destruction of historical sites as a tool for spreading terror and rewriting history. We all remember in Afghanistan when the Taliban wiped out the Bamiyan Buddhas in March of 2000. During the Holocaust, the Nazis systematically targeted Jewish property as part of their own effort to wipe out an entire race. Just as it didn't start with ISIS, it won't end with them either, so we need to stay vigilant. We need to stay committed to preventing this barbarity from occurring. We should continue enforcing and updating critical laws like the Protect and Preserve International Cultural Property Act. And we must remain dedicated to remembering these cultural masterpieces that ISIS destroyed. Projects like this recreation of the Arch of Palmyra are a critical way to celebrate these iconic pieces and keep them very much alive and present in our collective consciousness. So I'm proud to be here today honoring this extraordinary endeavor. I thank you all for coming, and as always, I'm proud to stand with my friend Chairman Royce. Thank you. Thank you. Let me begin with the observation uh, that uh, none of the members of Congress have been as focused on the people of Syria uh, as much as my colleague Elliot Engel here. Uh, the first legislation uh, that was uh, brought uh, before the House, the first uh, discussions we ever had with the President at the time, uh, Elliot raised that point, raised the point that it was the people in Syria who were walking uh, saying peaceful, peaceful, urging those gradual attempts to bring about some reform uh, to bring about a more uh, democratic governance, governance in, in Syria and those leading those those uh, walks uh, were shot with automatic weapons and uh, that is sort of seared into our memory but for me, what's seared into my memory is the conversations he had with the President of the United States at the time and with the rest of us in order to try to rally us. There are really two great uh, ironies in this story here today. Uh, and the first irony is that it would be the monumental arch of Palmyra that, that uh, faced destruction after 2,000 years of what rep it represented. Uh, it had a special place in history, uh, in the minds and the memories of people in that region. That's probably one reason why it survived the Crusades, uh, survived under Christian rule, under Muslim rule, under all the many wars. Uh, but it was what it represented to everyone. And what it represented, in a way, was the first enlightenment. You had there uh, a queen, uh, a queen in Zenobia, who represented someone who was not only a leader, but spoke Syriac, Egyptian, ancient Greek, spoke Latin, was the leader not just of this center of learning and center of philosophy, but uh, was also the leader of Egypt and uh, uh, the uh, Levant around that area. And when you consider that it was the fact that this represented for history this center of learning that that is what ISIS wanted to destroy I think I think Elliot had it right it, it is very um, memorable uh, that their first targets was Buddhism uh, and its history uh, in um, in Afghanistan and uh, for the Taliban for Al Qaeda it was uh, you know an attempt to destroy history and what it represented. The, the Enlightenment at the time, the ideals in philosophy at that time, are in many ways, uh, as, as Roger said, what we see around us here. And Alexei, thank you for what you've done uh, and what Oxford has done in making certain that this chapter of history is not forgotten.
because now 2,000 years later we have those whose very ambition is to destroy recorded history and evidence of it and rewrite history. Uh, and I guess the other real irony here is uh, the young man Basel who first took the photographs, uh, the young Syrian who documented uh, this arch and who had a dream that you know these these six sites would be protected all six have been damaged or destroyed by ISIS but his efforts here those photographs exist even though he himself was taken into custody by the Assad regime tortured and then killed the attempt or the successful effort to carry on and pass on the legacy of uh, what this represents is very important and I thank each of you for the role you've played in it in saving the monumental arch and we can thank 3D printing for the breakthroughs in terms of uh, now being able to replicate uh, history. So in closing I just appreciate your attending this event. Uh, I think it's an honor for Mr. Engel and myself to be here uh, and um, we hope that we continue to focus on the rights of the people in Syria and and hope for them uh, a future that guarantees uh, some measure of security and liberty uh, for that population. Thank you very much. And now comes the fun part uh, and the and the, the the unrehearsed portion of the uh, of, of the proceedings. That is uh, unveiling the arch. And depending on which way the wind's blowing, this could go very well or very poorly. Uh, we're completely underinsured, so let's hope for the former. Um, Alexi, what are our marching orders? Congressman, do you want to join me up here or? Get a photograph of uh, you two gentlemen with the arch.